Let's all go for a little ride, shall we? Now I'm here, you do things my way, understand? No one asked you to come along. Listen, you little bastard. I promised your mother I'd get you back in one piece, and that's what I'm gonna do. So from now on, shut the lip. Got it? It's just, um... I can't remember. I can't remember it. it, um, it it's you. Hit the numbers. Uh, I'm trying. Do it! Now! What have you done? Let's go! What have you done? I didn't... I didn't... Come on! You fucking idiot! Ridiculous they haven't been sent down yet. Yeah, tell me about it. I've had them this close three times. Third time lucky. Here come the girls. Good morning, Mrs. Bilkin. Mrs. Bilkin. Mrs. Bilkin. I want to meet those three down at Dark Honey. <laughs> Donna's the den mother. Lenny's wife. Rumor has it one look from her could turn you to stone. Yeah. Lady, good morning. How are you? Thank you for this, Murray. Mrs. Wilson, I'd just like you to focus your mind on your initial identification of one of the defendants. 
And this, as I understand it, was done at a police station. Yes. How did this identification take place? What methods did the police use? They show me videos of men on a computer. And as we now know, the person you say you recognise turned out to be Leonard Bilkin. Yes. And apart from the night in question, do you remember ever having seen Mr Bilkin before? No. So the only time you believe you saw him was at your house when you pulled his mask off? Yes. Well, Lord, I'd like to show the witness CCTV footage, exhibit RCC 21. This is the CCTV tape from the Nagoski jewellery shop taken on the morning of the attack. Now, uh, I'm very sorry for having to put you through this, Mrs Wilson, but can you tell me who you recognise on the screen? This is my husband. And that's the... He's on this side, and that's Janice. She works, worked for him. And the other person in the shop is you? Yes. Thank you. Again, I apologise, but we do have to watch a little more of this. There. Do you recognise the last person to enter the shop? Yes. Could you tell us who it is? It's the man who killed my husband. That's what you thought at the time? The time of your very emotional video identification? Mr Levington, can we get to the point? This, as you say, is clearly distressing. Mrs Wilson, the person you identified as your attacker, you had actually seen that very morning. Here was a man innocently shopping for an anniversary present for his wife. No. But you do remember seeing him that morning? Y yes. No, I, I don't. We have heard that a hair was found at your house that could have come from Leonard Bilkin. Has he ever been an invited guest at your house? No, never. Mrs Wilson, do you have any friends who have cats or dogs? Cats and dogs. Yes. Yes, and sometimes the hairs from these pets can get stuck to your clothes, yes? Yes, sometimes. And when you get home, do you brush them off? Yes, sometimes if there's a lot, yes, I... I... Mr Levinson, where are we going with this? I'm just about to explain, my lord. Mrs Wilson, human hairs are similar to the hairs from cats and dogs. They can also be shed. In fact, a hair from Mr. Bilkin could have fallen onto your coat and then fallen from your coat or been brushed off when you got home. Yes, yes that's tenor. it. Nice one. You've got to be bloody joking. He was at my house, I tell you. Mrs. Wilson, when your husband was shot, you were in the back of the van, so you could not possibly have seen who it was that was responsible for your husband's death. Boy. I saw him. I, he killed him. He killed him! Don't know what you're talking about. Silence! Silence! No further questions, Mark. Bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. Cats here. How bloody stupid do you think we are? Yeah, it's not about us, Mike. It never is. All rise. Joseph Arthur Miller. And your occupation? I'm the owner of two health clubs. Is it right to say that you have previous convictions for assault and robbery for which you received a sentence of 10 years custody? Yeah, it was nearly 20 years ago. I was a lot younger and a lot more stupid then. Could you please tell us what happened on the night of February the 14th this year? Yeah, I was about to leave the Woodford Club it was Valentine's night, I booked a table at the Peking Chef when Lenny Bilkin turns up, says he wants a word. About what? About a couple of million quid's worth of diamonds which he knew he could lay his hands on. Did he elaborate at all? Yeah, he told me what the play was. There'll be four of us. We'll go to Belsize Park where the manager of the jewel shop lived, take them to the shop, make them open up and hand over the gems. Did he say anything else? Yeah. He said... If this manager gives us any trouble, I'll blow his fucking brains out. So, when Lenny Bilkin made you this proposition, what was your reaction? No, oh, Tom, take a walk. I'm uninterested. Like I said, for me, those days are well gone. Liar! Well, uh
Could you explain to the jury what happened when you heard about the death of Mr. Wilson? Yeah, I spoke to a policeman and told him what I knew. Where was this? Well, originally it was DS Satchel at the health club, but then I went to a police station and gave an official statement. Mr. Miller, let's have a look at your previous convictions. Armed robbery. Grievous bodily harm. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Mr. Miller, you were involved in an armed robbery where someone was shot and nearly died. Not by me. Oh, yes, I'm aware that you had an imitation firearm. Yeah, I pleaded guilty. Yes, and then at trial, to save your skin, you gave evidence for the prosecution. My lord, it is known that Mr. Miller pleaded guilty and received a sentence some years ago. My learned friend cannot possibly speculate as to why someone chose to give evidence. Please move on, Mr. Levington. Mr. Miller, were you involved in this robbery? No. I did my time. I'm a respectable businessman now. And is that why today you are here giving evidence against Leonard Bilkin? A man was killed. That was out of order. So I went to the police, told him what I knew. Well, were you aware that Mr. Bilkin was expanding his business interests, specifically into sports goods and services? Yeah, I'd heard rumours. I mean, it's my business. I need to know what's going on. Quite so. And... Uh... Your business would no doubt benefit from the removing of competition. Well, of course it would. Perhaps that's why you went to the police and made up a story about Leonard Bilkin's involvement in the robbery and shooting of Mr Wilson. Not true. I don't need to do any of that. I'm a successful man, fair and square. This... this alleged conversation you had with Leonard Bilkin, there is not one shred of evidence to prove that it ever took place. No witnesses, no CCTV. You didn't even go straight to the police after your alleged meeting with Mr. Bilkin. Indeed, if what you say is true, and as an honest and thoroughly respectable member of the public, you could have prevented this whole thing happening. Yeah, I didn't think you'd go through with it then. No, Mr. Miller. No, the truth is, this conversation with Mr. Bilkin never took place. You're wrong. It did take place. It did. Can you bloody believe it? This should have been cut and dried. I am not losing those fucking Bilkins again. What happened last time? First time around, we reckoned they nobbled the jury. Second time was a fucking balls up judge through the case out of court. Why? What? I'm being called. Prosecution says the defence won't accept my statement. What the hell are they up to? Listen, Sarge. That Levington is a canny sword, canny enough to get them off scot-free if we're not careful. You make sure you get into that dock. You make sure you nail them. Got it? Sure. No pressure, eh? It's not a fucking joke, Satch. Dear Satchel, you took this detailed statement from Mr. Miller, who you say approached you. Oh, that's correct. He approached me at the Trojan Health Club in Woodford. The club owned by Mr. Miller, of which you are a member? Yes. And how long had you been a member prior to Mr. Wilson's death? Uh, a few months. So... It might be said to be very fortunate for Mr. Miller that you were close at hand. Um, it wasn't like that. Didn't you wonder why Mr. Miller chose to speak to you? Well, it's obvious. I'm a police officer, aren't I? Is it obvious? You're a plain-clothes officer with the murder squad. Uh, Mr. Levington, we all know dear Satchel's job, and his clothing is plain for all to see. Is there a purpose to this line of questioning? Yes, my lord. How was it that Mr. Miller knew that you were a police officer? Or someone How probably told the officer told him. answer that? He approached me and asked me if I was a police officer. Ah. You didn't give your occupation on the membership application form? No. I don't like people knowing what I do for a living. So, through sheer intuition, Mr. Miller correctly guessed that you were a police officer, and even more remarkably, that you were a police officer already working on this case in question. Yes. So, what made you interested in what Mr. Miller had to say? <clears throat> well, it appeared he had uh, information relevant to the case that I was investigating. I knew Mr. Miller, a bit about his past. I thought I was the right person to listen to what he said. Is Mr. Miller a friend of yours? No. Do you socialise together? No. 
did you or do you have any sort of relationship, personal or financial, with Mr. Miller? I'm not gay, if that's what you mean. Sorry? Mr. Miller is gay. I'm not. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with him being gay, but I resent your implication that we're in a relationship. I was not implying anything, but I will note that you say Mr. Miller was not your boyfriend and that you are not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Levington, dear Satchel's sexual preferences are of no relevance to this case. Officer, what I think you are being asked, if rather clumsily by Mr. Levington, is whether you had any type of contact with Mr. Miller other than when he came up to you in the club. No, I have not. And after he supposedly approached you with his information, did you bother to investigate whether Mr. Miller knew more than he was saying, whether perhaps he was involved in this robbery? Well, there was no evidence to suggest that he was. Or did you not investigate? Because in point of fact, you yourself approached Mr. Miller in the first place. I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat the question, please? Well, let me put it another way, if it's confusing. You knew Mr. Miller had previous convictions, and it's clear for all to see that he is a very ambitious man. And you and Mr. Miller share a dislike of the Bilkins, isn't that true? No. You like the Bilkins? No. Mr. Miller wants to expand his business. You wanted to put someone away. Leonard Bilkin was the common obstacle. Why not pull your interests? You agree to stitch him up. Yeah, and that's the truth. He's bent. If there are any more interruptions from the public gallery, I will have you removed from this court. Did you suggest or encourage Mr. Miller to fabricate evidence against Leonard Bilkin? Of course not. But you are aware that this has happened to Mr. Bilkin before at the hands of the police? I don't know anything about that. Perhaps if I remind the witness that in 1984, the police conspired in creating false evidence against Leonard Bilkin, the case rightly being thrown out and a senior police officer convicted of perjury and attempting to pervert the course of justice in 1985. I wasn't even on the, on the force then. No. But your current boss was, though, wasn't he? DCS Walker was a part of that grossly corrupt investigation, just as he has been a part of this one. The police have long memories when one of their own gets caught, don't they? Or perhaps you were just under pressure to find evidence that could put Mr. Bilkin in the frame. This is the culmination of a long vendetta, isn't it? Over the four occasions it took for you to write Mr. Miller's statement you concocted this false evidence against Leonard Bilkin, and that is the actual truth, isn't it, officer? It is not. Yes, it is. It's a stitch up. It should be him being done. Silence! No further questions, my lord. Idiot! Oh. oh, you were truly sensational, Satch. What the hell happened, Satch? I don't know. I just. Just what? You just dropped us in the bloody shit. Well, at least we know you're not gay, yeah? Oh, no. I need whiskey. You have been instructed to reach a majority verdict on which at least ten of you agree. In respect of Barry Bilkin, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. That's it. In respect of Terence Bilkin, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Yes, no, <laughs> In respect of Leonard Bilkin, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? We can't reach a decision. Uh, Mr. Darwin, I'm sure you will advise the court when this case is relisted in a week's time as to whether or not the Crown will be applying for a retrial against Leonard Bilkin. Terence Bilkin, Barry Bilkin, you are free to go. I can indicate the Crown will seek a suitable date for a retrial. Leonard Bilkin, you will remain in custody.
you started on this investigation, who's in charge? Oh, Mike, this is DS Short. You've seen these? I've seen the headlines. There was nothing wrong with that investigation. We had that bastard till Satch fucked her up. It wasn't all Satch's fault. Oh, meaning it was mine? Oh, yeah. Don't tell me you're buying that vendetta shape. Levington was on form. Yes, and I warned him about Levington. He walked straight into it. He may as well have thrown his hands in the air and said, Oh, I'm a gay prat, my governor's bent. You were the one who told him to go for it. Look, we've got a mistrial, we can have another go at Lenny. Yeah, we have, and we ain't gonna fuck up this time. No mistakes. Please leave us cancelled. This is DS Short. He's a financial uh, investigator from Sirius and Organize. Finance? What? Hey, why not? Can't be worse than such. Juries have a mind of their own, Mike. Especially when the bookings are breathing down their neck. Oh, wait, and you think they were got at? Don't you? No, I think they had an awful lot to make sense of. I have some information that might help if... Dear Short, how long have you been investigating the Bilkins finances? Uh, for about a year now. And you still haven't caught them? I think you're going to be a superb member of this team. Well, it's coming at me from all angles, isn't it? Walker keeps looking at me like I'm something he trod in. And now Kay wants me to take her on holiday before she has the baby. Has she given you grief? No, but she will do once I tell her it's not going to happen. Yeah, I bet she doesn't want you to go to that gym anymore, does she? What? Well, not now she's found out that it's all a bit, um... Left footed. Oh. Right, listen up, everybody. Your attention, please. As you know, the Bilkin 3 is now the Bilkin 1. But he's our main man. It gives us another shot, so no more cock ups. We keep our case so tight, Tiger Woods won't even be able to find a hole. This is D.S. Short, who's a financial investigator with soccer. She's been investigating the Bilkins for money laundering. Well, prior to this jewelry job, Lenny Bilkin was attempting to legitimize his business. We know that one of his employees has recently been moving funds into a sportswear company, a company owned by Joe Miller. So Leventon was in the right ballpark? Yeah. But like us, he had no hard evidence to back it up. And Lenny goes down, then uh, Miller can move in on the Bilkin Empire. But why would Lenny want Miller involved in the robbery? Well, maybe he didn't. Maybe he just heard enough on the grapevine to be able to fit him up. That's a hell of a grapevine. Yeah, well, we can go around this forever. The reality is we have a mistrial and we need to be 110% accurate. So, Satch, I want you to go back over Miller's statement. Get digging. I need somebody who can corroborate this meeting with Lenny. That doesn't mean that you have to get into the sauna with him. Uh, something else, guys. <laughs> You've heard that his silk said at the trial that uh, Lenny Bilkin was fitted up. It's absolutely true. Jim Weaver, my old boss, was a bloody good copper, but he made a bloody stupid mistake. Lenny Bilkin drove him to it because we couldn't put a finger on him. And Jim's gonna pay for that the rest of his life. But that's history. We have now got a chance to nail this bastard. Let's play it by the book. That's all. Look, the defence will use the same tactics. They worked before. Are you sure no one else heard your conversation or even just saw you with Lenny? I told you before, nobody. Why was Levington suggesting you were interested in taking over the Bilkins business? Like you just said, he suggested it, that's all. Didn't prove anything. No, but it muddied the waters, didn't it? What? Well, and that's my fault. Eh? I'd say your gaffer's hired on for Lenny Bilkin did a fair bit of muddy on, wouldn't you? You better not be hiding anything from me. If you make me look like a fool again, I'll get you banged up for perjury before you know it. Star witness or no fucking star witness. I'm telling you, Lenny Bilkin was here. How else do I know details? I'm not going to make it up, am I? Everything all right, Jamie? Yeah, it's fine, Jamie. Dear Satchel was just leaving. I can still offer you protection. Well, I look like I need protection. Your choice. Oh. Look, I'm hearing it. It's on the street. Everybody knows I'll try and get you. Yeah, in the raw mouth. Well, call that copper back. Get protection. Then I look like I'm running scared. Let them bring on whatever I can handle. Oh, you don't need to impress me, Joe. Please. I don't want you to get hurt. Let me get someone. Security, you need someone. I don't need no one. You don't. Or maybe someone. Listen, I need you to do me a favour. Mrs. Bilkin. 
Mind if we come in? What do you want? We're just uh, returning some items of your sons. You mess up our lives, then come in here with your bags and think it'll all be all right. Oh, I think you got a little bit wrong there, sweetheart. We didn't mess up your lives. I think you did that for yourself. Well, this is messing it up, is it? That is where I'm standing. Hello, Zoe. We've got guests, Zoe, but they won't be staying. Oh. <laughs> You've never been able to pin anything on this family. Yeah, tide's changing, sweetheart. I don't think so. See you then. What, Louis Cairns? Oh. Not all blonde, then. And I'm not talking repro, either. See, we don't need to be involved in some poxy robbery. We have everything we want. You know, life is going to get very difficult for you girls. Dream on. Oh, Terry and Barry, they're hardly a chip off the old block, are they? Oh, yeah. It's going to get really tough with those two at the helm. Afternoon, ladies. Thanks for the hospitality. Just got a point. What about it? Well, think about it. You're worth 10 mil. No one's ever come close to finding out how you've got all this cash and you're trying to legitimise your business. Why would you risk all that for an old-fashioned robbery? This wasn't Lenny's idea. He's too smart for this. So you sing as Barry and Terry. Where does that leave Lenny? He's probably just riding shotgun. Babysitting. Ah, kids, huh? Hello, my lovely. Nice surprise. Oh, I was in the area. Have oh, you had a good day? Yeah. Good. You were in the area. And? And nothing. You want to lift up? No, I'd rather walk. You sure? Yeah, a little walk is good for me. Okay. Bye. Oh, uh, by the way, I can't make that holiday. That's the case. Really? Uh, Mike's cancelled all leave till after the retry lesson. Well, that's not going to be until I've had the baby. No. I don't believe this. I ask you for one thing. Well, it's not my fault. I no, of course it's not. Now, it never is your fault, is it? When you have to go in on weekends or when you come home late at night, it's if never your fault. If there was anything fault. I could do, then. I know, but... I... Say, excuse me. Hmm. Dear Satchel. Who? Hi. Oh, Jamie, yes. Sorry, um, I, I saw you at the gym earlier. I'll see you at home, you know, whenever that is. Kate. No! Sorry, yes. What can I do for you? You called dear Satchel because you wanted to make a statement. Yes. What about? About Joe. Joe, Joe Miller meeting with Lenny Bilkey. Go on. I was there when they met. When was that? Last February. You remember a date? 14th, um, Valentine's Day. Where did they meet? At the health club. Why have you suddenly decided to come forward with this information, Jamie? Be uh, because Joe said it was best for me not to get involved at the time. I mean, he, he knew what the Bilkins were like, I mean, what they're capable of. Uh, he, he said it was best I say nothing. And, uh... And, uh, what? I was scared. But you're not anymore. Yeah, but the situation's changed. Uh, Lenny Bilkin could get off. Then I'd be twice as scared uh, for Joe. You have more than a working relationship with Joe Miller, don't you? Yeah. I'm his boyfriend. We've been together about 18 months. You understand that perjury, averting the course of justice, are uh, offences for which you can go to prison? I'm telling you the truth. I, I saw them together. I think it'll play. You mean, is he telling the truth? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Well, why do you wait to come forward? Well, maybe he's protecting Miller. You said there were an item. It's one thing for Miller to cross the bill, because he thinks he's a hard man. Really want to put Jamie in harm's way? Yeah, right. So now he's got to make sure Lenny goes down. What the boys he reckons he can handle? Well, I'd buy that, wouldn't you? Yeah? Okay, bring in Miller. He's got to stand up at the retrial. How'd he go? I'm not sure. Mice no odds. 
What if they find out I'm lying? It won't happen. Who's it to call you a liar? It's the final nail in Lenny Bilkin's coffin. Once he goes down and rests a piece of piss, moving on those toe rag sons of his, you did good. I did it for you, Jay. No, no, no. You did it for us. See you later. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, I'm going to be a while, yeah. Yeah. Look, about this, um, this holiday. Tell me I'm imagining this. Our chief bloody witness. Could we offered him protection, hey, Mike? I suppose we're all thinking the same thing. Yeah, but who's the real IRA? What do you bloody think? Should we pull them in? You bet. These cocky bastards think they can get away with everything. Hey, just because we know they did it doesn't mean we can prove it, Mike. Oh, come on, Roisin. They must have screwed themselves up this time. And we've got an eyewitness, a bloody copper. You saw everything, didn't you, Search? Yeah. Why, why, why didn't he believe me? You need to listen to us, Nigeria. You know who killed Joe. And you know why. He should have let us take care of him. We can take care of you. <sighs> you want me to take the stand? You stand by your statement, don't you, Jimmy? Yes. I'll testify. <sighs> it's what. It's what Joe would want. Look after yourself. It's like Christmas, way. <laughs> Don't take no shit. In you get, Terry. Mind your head, sir. Make sure you tuck them up nicely. You lot remind me of a hamster. You know, in one of those wheels, little feet just going round and round and getting nowhere. This is harassment. Oh, I'd have thought you'd have been used to that. I know the value of every object in this house. Thanks. If I find a single chip on a vase after you've gone, I'll sue. Sue's his famous witness in. Oh, you don't think I'm going to tell you that, Terry? I'm not worried either way. See, I've got an alibi. There he is, too. What a surprise, Terry. Tell me about it. We were at a birthday party. Fabio was on Dean Street. Check it out. It's one of ours. Uh-huh. See, it was the manager's 30th. His name is Fabio. Conte. Busy, was it, this party? Hmm. That's not so. People have remembered we were there. Yeah, it was my birthday, but because Mr. Bilkin was still in jail, we kept it small. How'd you fix your alibi, Barry? Hmm? Was it fear or just cash?
Because you know you're gonna wonder with daddy inside, are people gonna still lie for you? I've got all day, Barry. You're going to remain in custody while my colleagues confirm this alibi. You heard the shot, then you hit the deck. Yeah. It was instinct. I crawled round the front of the car and I saw the shooter far at Miller said he was already on the ground. What did he look like? Oh, what was he wearing? A black uh, zip top, maybe sweatpants. Do you recognize him? Was it one of the Bilkins? I don't know. It was so far. What the hell is that? You saw him shoot Miller. I saw the gun. I saw the flash from the gun and. Yeah. He pulled his balaclava up. He must have been showing his face to Miller. So he's taunting him. He's letting him know who's killing him. Yeah, that proves it had to be one of the Bilkins and not a hitman. Sarge, you know him, you saw him, I know you did. Look, I just... Well, Sheen, it's in there, somewhere. It's in there somewhere, I'm just trying to get it out. Dave, your wife's at the desk. She's in a real state. Okay, look, go and talk to her, please, okay? We can do this another day. Could you go easy on him, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you ID the shooter? Yeah. Yeah, he will. Given time. Why couldn't you do like the old man told us? The old man's not here, is he? You know he wanted to get someone else in. Then we'd have been sitting pretty. We are sitting pretty. What have they got? Sweet F.A. You want a job doing right, right? I made sure Miller ain't gonna make any deathbed statements. Three, two, one, bang. Right between the eyes. In a public place. I had it covered. You should have been there. You should have seen the look on his face when I pulled back the mask. You pulled back. Have you got a fucking death wish or something? No. I've got class, brother. It's all wrapped up nice and neat in a little box. No witnesses and a cast iron alibi. You know, a bit of gratitude wouldn't go amiss. Let me ask you something. What'd you do with a gun? I kept it. I might need it again. For fuck's sake, Barry. What? Get rid. Now. I mean it. That's good to know. Well, guess what, boys? They're not bullshitting. They've got an eyewitness for the Miller shooting. I knew it! I told you, Barry! That ain't possible. You haven't heard the best of it yet. It's a copper. All right. All I need now is a name. Satchel. DS Dave Satchel. Yeah. I'm Detective Inspector Hansen. This is DS Richardson. I'm afraid your husband's been injured and we've been asked to pick you up and take you to the hospital. What's happened? He's been shot. Oh my God. How, how bad? Oh, I'm not sure, but we'll best get you there as soon as possible, eh? Oh, I'm going to have to go home and try and make it up to her. She's still mad at you about the whole of the shit. Okay. 
thought she put it on the back burner after the shooting, but it seems to have made it worse. Still, it's not the best time of her being pregnant, I mean. Right. That is me. Oh, come on, you've got time for one more. No, I don't know. Oh, come on, Satch. Go on, then. <laughs> I'm already in a doghouse as it is. Call the station. Let them know you're with us. Battery's good. Have you got a phone uh, I could use? Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hi, love. Hello, sweetheart. Who is this? You don't need to know that. And you don't need to worry about your wife and your daughter. They'll be just fine with us. Oh, yeah. They've got no. Got who? Someone's got my K and Abigail. They've got them. They've got Hi! Kai! Any news? Uh, not yet, no. Satch, last time you had any contact with her was just before she went to pick up Abigail, right? Yeah. Yeah, and she was fine when she left. Yeah. Someone's got them. Yeah, well, she was okay when she left the nursery. We're checking CCTV. There won't be any CCTV in the nursery. Not around the nursery, Satch. The streets, the shops of cameras. We flooded the place with officers. I uh, guess someone's on from here, from... The from a house where we've no idea what's happening. Dave, we will find them, I promise you. Circulate this for me, will you? No, I've got, I've got a bit of ones. Yeah, I'm going to put them. Wait, Satch, please. Why? There's nothing happening here. We're doing all we can, Dave. Oh, this is stupid. This is just stupid. We know took them. What are we going to do? We can just, just stand here. What are you going to do with us? What's all this about? You never mentioned anything about kidnapping women and children. Nothing to do with us? Of course, it's to do with you. You overstepped the mark. That's it for me. I'm out. I did what I was paid for. You listen to me, you little shit. You do exactly as we say, or everyone is going to know about the ten grand you happily accepted. You're our man on the inside, like it or not. And we want to know everything. And if we find you've been keeping anything back, we'll fry you alive. <sighs> Give her the money. Hey, hey, hey. I'm sorry. 
sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the baby's gonna be okay. The hell you? I just dropped the shot. Some space. She almost lost a baby, for Christ's sake, Mike. Yeah, you know what's going to happen then, don't you? She won't remember either. They've had long enough. You are not going in there, do you understand me? Satch wants us to catch him, doesn't he? What's going on? How is she? How's the baby? They're fine. Doc said they'll be fine. Great. Did she give you anything? <laughs> uh, two blokes in a car said they were police. What make a car? Uh, she's not sure. Said it was green. Well, why then? Well, what have they ever done to deserve You're an this? You're eyewitness in a fatal shooting such. They just want you to forget what you saw. Well, how do they know it was me? Shooter must have spotted you. No, there's no way. Jamie Johnson knew you were there. Why would he tell the Bilkins? Fear. Greed. Who knows? Yeah, we'll find him, Satch. We'll nail those bastards. Will we? Carol. Carol, did you get any further on that? Uh, yeah, we've got the index from the CCTV. There's a clear shot of Kane Abigail getting into it. It's a Ford Mondeo registered in Wakefield. Okay, Guys, what? I know we all feel pretty lousy about Satch's wife and kid, but let's stay focused. This is about Joe Miller's murder and us nicking the Bilkins. Yep, we're all very aware of that, Mike. Thank you. Sam, I want you to work with Carol on this Mondeo issue, OK? I want you to keep pushing it through until you get more. Now, what I'd like... Sam, what's the update on the van used in the murder? Oh, burnt out. It's been recovered from a stretch of wasteland 20 minutes from the Trojan Health Club. It was reported stolen from Ballon on the day of the shooting. OK, thanks. Well done. Good job, team. Keep going. Mike, could I have a word with you in my office, please? I ain't got much time, Roisin. Is this a police investigation, Mike? A oh, what? Or is this Mike Walker versus the Bilkins, the sequel? The Bilkin shot Joe Miller. Our job was to nick him. End of story. Lenny Bilkin is a vicious thug, but he has never left a string of bodies behind him before. Oh, are you suggesting it might not be there? I'm suggesting we need hard evidence, Mike, which I will get if you will allow Once me. Once Satch puts either of the Bilkins at the scene of the murder, you'll have all the evidence you need. What if he didn't see the face? What do we do? Do we make it up, Mike? Like Jim Weaver? I really don't deserve this, Roisin. Especially not from you. Ballistics have come back with the results of the bullets that they took from Miller's body. They match the bullets that killed Wilson. Yes, a direct link between two murders. There's your evidence. Happy? We still need to prove that the Bilkins pulled the trigger. Is he coming too? Yeah. How long? I don't know until it's safe. You mean until the Bilkins are put away? I guess, yeah. You're never going to do that. You know that. I don't yes. know that. You do. Can... The only way we're going to feel safe is if you put the people that did this to us inside. Do you want me to quit? Is that what you want, Kate? Recognize it? Should I? It was the gun that was used to shoot Colin Woodson and John Miller. Wait a minute. Is that my Tuesday gun? Is that the gun I used to kill people on Tuesdays? How could I forget that? So it was just a set of unusual circumstances, eh, Lenny? 
You might not have noticed, Superintendent, but I haven't been getting out lately. I think I've got an alibi for Joe Miller's murder. So you didn't pull the trigger, but you ordered the hit. Oh, so now I'm Al Capone, eh? Ordering hits from my prison cell. Let me remind you, Superintendent, that I'm a respectable businessman with no criminal record. Hmm. You've seen The Godfather, haven't you, Lenny? One or two. Both. Always get rid of the gun. But you didn't. Now that strikes me as out of character. But then, you weren't really running the show, were you? The apple never falls far from the tree, but it can still be crawling with maggots. Rotten fruit, your boys, Lenny. One of them held onto the gun, so when you go down, you'll have them to thank for it. And now you won't be able to help them. Or yourself. You've got no proof of anything. You've got a gun that you know I couldn't possibly have had in my possession, and you've got nothing linking me to the murder of Joe Miller. This is the best day I've had in weeks. Thanks, Mike. Bring on the retrial. Hmm? I want to go home. There's a credit card statement. February the 14th. It's for food and drinks in a bar called Boccaccio, a gay bar in Marbella. It's our satyr, but he knows it. Jamie Johnson was in Spain the night he claims to have seen Lenny with Miller. Shit. Sneaky little liar. I'm thinking if Jamie was lying about that, what else was he lying about? Well, like what? What if he's had his own agenda from the off? What if he's been working for the Bilkins all along? It would then make sense how they knew about Dia Satchel being an eyewitness. Jamie was there. No, no, no. Carol, you've got to stay on track. I still think the shooter saw Satch. Yeah, but you can't keep going on your hunches, Mike. Carol's given us something concrete, and I think we need to follow it up. Look, I'll have a word with Jamie, see what he comes up with. OK, who wants the good news? One guess who the gun was registered to. Ain't in the mood for game, Sam. Terry Bilkin. It's only Terry Bilkin's own bloody gun. Yes, that's all right. Oh, OK, Sam, let's pick him up. Get out. Oh, you a boy in a uniform. Right, beautiful. Yeah? Sorry, I forgot your name. Come on. Jump out. Listen, I'm gonna pick you up. You just wait inside till I come in. Okay? Have you given me a kiss? Here's Jane. Tell me how you were in two places at once, Jamie. Well? Uh, somebody stole my card. And did you report it missing? Of course not. Stop messing me about, Jamie. Will the Pilkins have to know I tried to stitch them up? Well, they will if I have you up for perjury, which I will if you don't come clean. I need you to do me a favour. Joe asked me to lie for it. Why, so Lenny go down for a long stretch? Is this the truth this time, Jamie? Yes. You're working for the Bilkins. <laughs> what? Do me a favour. Why, well, you could tell them about the shooting, who was I've there. I've never spoken to any of them. But I can tell you one thing, I know which one shot Joe. It was Barry. And I can't prove it, but I know. How? <laughs> because Barry never got over Joe dumping him for me. Say that again? He wanted him back. He kept ringing. And Joe told him to piss off. I told him he was in love with me. Barry Bilkin is gay. Miller! And then Joe turned up at the witness stand, testifying against him. I reckon he flipped. And Joe told me he was a psycho. Why didn't you tell us this before? I didn't want to get on the wrong side of Barry Bilkin.
Recognise this gun? No. How come there's one registered in your name? It was registered in my name, but it was deactivated. In 2001? Sounds about right. Well, somebody's reactivated it, and I think that's you. No. No, definitely not me. You see, the, uh... The gun was stolen. 18 months ago. Hey. Good to see you back. Hey, they've arrested Terry Bilkin. Interviewing him now, room two. How's Kay? Oh, she's fine. And Abigail? Well, she's too young to know what happened, isn't she? Oh, that's a blessing. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? For what happened. I'm just really sorry. Yeah. You said. I don't expect you to believe it, but I expect a jury to believe it. You see, a mate of mine, Jack Safety, was thinking about buying it. So I drove it over to him, stopped off to get some fares, came back to the car, and guess what? The car was broken into. And you were there. How do you feel about Joe Miller? Well, he's not exactly on our favourites list. Oh, really? Not even Barry's? I would have thought he would have been. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, of course you do. Barry and Joe had a relationship. Joe ended that relationship, what, about a year ago? From what I hear, Barry was very broken-hearted. There was no relationship. I suppose in your family, coming out isn't easy. My brother. He's not gay. You know what, Terry? I would love to be a fly on the wall when your old man gets to find out. <laughs> Charge me. Go on. Charge me, then. Can't, can you? <laughs> Can't charge me, can you? It's about time we were going, don't you? My brief tells me they've had Terry in. Yeah, they've let him go. Yeah, I heard. Something about his gun. <laughs> Are you joking? What? His gun? <laughs> Where's his head at? I told him to get someone in to take care of Joe Miller. It wasn't his fault. He thought Barry had you know, got rid of it after the jewellers. Barry, not Terry, Barry. I should have known. He wants to prove what? something. He's proved something, all right. He's proved he's a fucking idiot. He only wants to please you. Look, if he screws up again, he'll be impressing me in the next cell. <laughs> Tell Terry to get him on side, and quickly. He won't listen to Terry. He'll have to listen to you. Donna, I'm nearly 60. If I go down for this, I ain't coming out again. Ever. You were on the phone. Yeah, I was, I was talking to Kay and I... I heard something. Shots? You heard shots? Yeah, I, I heard shots. Like, I went to ground. I, I was scared. Yeah, but don't worry about that. I'd have been scared too, Satch. OK, you looked up. You looked to see what it was. Yeah. Who did you see? I don't know why. What are the brokers? You just said that. No, I said it could have been one of oh, the... come on, Dave. They had balaclavas on, Mike. I didn't see their faces. They bloody saw you. No, they couldn't have. I was down behind the car. There's no way they could have seen me. Look, look, it's obvious. Someone somewhere told the Bilkins that I'd be there. It's them that we should be looking for. Dave, you really need to stay focused, son. I've been chasing these bastards for 20 years. I'm not going to start chasing fucking phantoms. You know, that brief was right. You are obsessed with the Bilkins. OK, Serge. Never mind. Why don't you just go home? I can understand how you're feeling. Just go home. You have no idea what I'm feeling, what I've been through. You have absolutely no fucking idea. Yes, sir, sir. They took my wife and my kid, Mike! Do you know what that's like, not being able to protect your family, looking over your shoulder every fucking second? You want this to go away? You want it to end? You give me what I need. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right, Mike, because it's all about you, isn't it? Not unless we serve Lenny Bilking's head on a platter. Well, fine. It was... Barry, 
or Terry? You choose. Okay, Sash, that's enough. Don't no, come go. on, mate, come on. Barry or Terry, your choice. This is perfect. I mean it! You write whatever you want down, I'll put my name to it, I'm through with this. I'm through with this, I'm through with being treated like shit, and I'm through with being a copper. Hey, hey, Satch, come on. No, I should have done this years ago. If you walk out, what are you? Sorry, what am I? If you're not a cop, what are you? A human being, Mike. Evening, Wendy. You know, I didn't think you'd have to work. I like to keep busy, which I am, so if you can make this quick, whatever it is. Just here to talk about your husband. The innocent man who tried to fit up for murder. <laughs> Barry, um, had a relationship with Joe Miller. You don't seem surprised. I don't see how my private life is any of the police's concern. No, fair enough. Absolutely. The uh, thing is, it's not just personal, it's actually a bit of a mess. I think that Barry asked Joe Miller to be part of the jewellery raid. Lucy, you can go home. Why would you do that? Get back together again. How sweet. And when Miller said no, and the whole thing started going wrong, he realised he had an opportunity to take down not just Barry, but the whole Bilkin clan. It wasn't much of a plan in the end, was it? When you think about it, Barry's got almost too many reasons to want Miller dead. Sounds like he got what he deserved. And what about you, Wendy? Did you get what you deserved? You could go down as an accessory to murder, Wendy. Is it worth it? Is he worth it? You tell me what I need to know about the Bilkins and I can protect you, Wendy. Help you put Barry away. Yeah. He has let you down, Wendy. You owe him nothing. You owe them nothing. I stand by them. Oh. Boss, they found the Mondeo that was used in the abduction of Kay and Abigail. Burnt out, of course, but they found a petrol can nearby. Managed to pull off some prints. They showed up that it's belonging to a character named of Johnny Howells. Yeah, what did we know about him? Well, he's a jack of all trades, been involved in burglary, car theft, drug dealing, ABH. He's been in and out of prison. Any connection to the Bilkins? No, no, nothing that leaps out. Hang on, the ABH? It's Fabio Conte, you know who that is, don't you? It's a restaurateur that gave the Bilkins their alibi. Pull in this Johnny Howells. I don't believe in coincidences. Why should I go underground? I ain't scared. Oh, big man, I'm really impressed. Do you know the difference between being brave and being fucking stupid? Meaning what? Meaning next time you shoot someone, why don't you leave a nice handwritten note, eh? Yours truly, the Bilkins. Save everyone the trouble. Where are we going? There won't be a next time. Look, this is your father's decision. End of story. Dad should concentrate on covering his own end and let us take care of business. Maybe when you're half the man your father is, you can tell him so. Till then, keep it shut. You know, I'm getting pretty fucking jarred by people telling me what to do. You seem to do what you want most of the time. Meaning what? You know what? You fucking no, it's silly. Right. It's fucking uh... silly tart. Hey, hey. Take it easy, mate. Oi. You should say sorry, Wendy. You're way out of order. Don't you protect him. It's about 
about time someone told him what's what. Let alone Zoe. Why? You think I like having that around my kids? It's disgusting. Shut your mouth and leave it alone. You can all leave it alone right now. But we are this close to going down. All of us. Christ, I wish Lenny was back. You have no idea how much I miss having a real man about. Now, we are a family. Got it? And we're going to start behaving like a family. That means no more solo stunts, no more fuck-ups, and we are going to leave this place in half an hour. So get packing! <laughs> so let's not mess about, Johnny, yeah? Your fingerprints were found on a petrol can on a wasteland in South London. The petrol can had been used to torch a Ford Mondeo that was used in an abduction. So, do you mind telling me how your prints got there? Oh well, yeah, I was uh, just attempting passing this wasteland and uh, I saw this burnt out car. And you were just passing? Saw this burnt out car. There's a petrol can just lying there, so I checked if it was empty, and it was, and I went on my way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about Kay and Abigail Satchel? I don't know them. Really? I think you do. What's on your mind? Usual things. Man shot in cold blood in front of me. My wife and daughter abducted him broad daylight, you know. Anyone would think it was you they'd taken. Try thinking about me and Abby for a change, can you? I can't think of anything else. You know, if you let them get to you like this, they have one. Maybe they have. Valencia Conte. Name in anything to you? Let me refresh your memory. You did six months for ABH on her brother, Fabio. Now, Valencia, who of course goes by the name Zoe Bilkin these days, this ringing any bells? I don't have to say anything. No, you don't, Johnny, but now that we know your connection to the Bilkins, we can bring them in, we can explain to them how careless you've been in leaving your prints all over a petrol can, and then charge them with being accessories. We can't do that. Oh, yes, we can. Hey, they'll kill me. They probably will, yeah. So why don't you just tell me about your relationship with Zoe Bilkin? Where did you meet her? She lived in Leeds. She went on this trip to London and she met Teddy and when she went back north, Teddy followed her. I mean, it seems she fell for Teddy. And her parents were dead. Her older brother, Fabio, he, he brought him up. And, well, when he found out that Teddy was already married and Zoe was giving up all things Italian, he went him shit. So Bilton got you to take care of the brother? No. He took care of the brother. Zoe took care of the brother. <laughs> she, she laid into him with his bit of piping. I was there and I took the rap for it. Why? It was worth it. <laughs> you know, Armley didn't bother me and I bought a house. And Fabio, he got a stint in the hospital uh, and a restaurant, so... So, Terry told you to kidnap Kay and Abigail Satchel? No. I did that myself. It's nothing to do with them. Okay. You send me down. <laughs> I don't care. You seen Mike? No. I think he's gone. You're working late? Oh, Dave. I thought he was out of order earlier. Oh, well, that's the way he is. You live with it. Or not, as the case may be. How long are you staying with us? Oh, till the retrial. You've been working on the Bilkins for... How long is it now? 
Uh, about a year. So I've got a present for Walker. Should make you very happy as well. How do you mean? I know who shot Miller. I remembered. That's... that's great. Are you going to ask me who it is? <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> I'll save it for Mike. You probably walk though, they always do. Who knows? Maybe this time. Yeah, well, I don't give a toss either way. I'm quitting the force. <laughs> Not my problem anymore. Sleep. Hello. Must be nice to have your family home. Who is this? It's Donna Bilkin. Just wanted you to know it was nothing personal and we'd like to make amends. How? Oh. I can pay you to lose your memory. Nice tidy sum to start your new life in style. Get all the things your wife's always dreamed of but could never afford on a copper's pay. What'd you say? I say let's talk. Carol. Uh, Mike wants to see us all in my office. Oh, what's up? Turns out such can I do the shooter after all. I know, he told me last night. Looks like Mike's third degree worked after all. Yeah. Such. You're back. Things look different in the morning, don't they? Looks like we got the Bilkins, Carol. Tell her, Such. Donna Bilkin called me up last night. Offered me 50 grand to keep my mouth shut. Oh, that's great. We've got them now. Yeah, but there's only one thing we don't quite understand, Carol. Satch tells me you were the only one he told about remembering the shooter. So who told Donna? What's the going rate, Carol? I think you should maybe tell me. No, I don't want to undersell myself, yeah? I don't know what you're talking about. I could have killed my child! <laughs> my wife nearly lost her marriage! <laughs> and I had to kill her! And you! You! Get back there! Down for you, you fucking pango! There's nothing I can tell you. Well, that's not going to help you much, is it, Carol? I swear. It was one way traffic. I just gave them information. They never told me anything. What about the jewelers? No. I was as surprised as I'm sorry, you're telling me that you've been in bed with the Bilkins for how many months and you're telling me that this is the best that you can do? Donna Bilkin wants to meet with Dia Satchel in a lay-by in Buckinghamshire. Does that mean anything to you, Carol? Of course. Yeah, they, they, they have a safe house. Near Tring, it was brought through one of their holding companies. That, that's why it never shows up. You better be telling me the truth. I am, I am, I swear it. I... You never wanted this to happen. I hated every minute of it. When they, they took his wife and kid. Please tell him I'm sorry. What the hell happened, Carol? It was... It was my brother. He was doing some 
deliveries for them. Don't ask me how, but you lost a package of drugs. You know what they're like. He was going to end up at the bottom of the Thames. So you went to the other side? They wanted a car index. Some, some other guy who'd stepped out of line. So I... I gave it to them. And then they had you. Why don't you talk to us? You don't think we could help you with your brother? I was scared. And I didn't think. You're not unique. Most of us are offered it. Some of us have the courage to say no. I'm glad. I'm glad it's over. We do not have to do this. We can make them right now, Mike. That's how it is, Roisin. His choice. So the transmitter's in the phone. Oh, come on, Kay is pregnant. Because of the Belkin, she nearly wasn't. Yeah? And if it's a setup, you're dead the second you walk through that door, Satch. I got armed officers training into the nearby. There's another unit on standby at the Tring House. He's well covered. I'm taking the risk, Rushing. I want to finish this today, and then we'll lose sense. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Copper that saw you shoot Miller. That's how he's gonna pick him up. That's bollocks. It's my word against this. Why can't you just say thank you to us for tidying things up for you, eh? Okay, fair enough. Let me take care of him. No, Terry and I'll do it. Why? Why can't I do it? I done Miller, didn't I? Don't start, Barry. We've got time for this. We're doing this my way. Come on! Tell. I hope you've got the chops for it, brother. She must have found it. I'll give the order to move in. Why? Oh, it's just Zoe. We can take her. No, no, no. We wait till we get to the house. Now, well, take it easy. You're going to be OK. You're on our side now. the safe house. All units stand by. Okay, move in now, Mike. No, not yet. 
Mike, please, I've got a really bad feeling about this. This is such a life that we're screwing with here. It's his bloody choice, was she? Because he's as fucked up about the Vilkins as you are. I've had enough of this. I'm getting him out of there. All units. I'm a senior officer. I make the decisions, not you. She's changed direction. She's heading into the woods. Where are we going? What are you doing here? It's family business. You got the money? <laughs> well, that was the arrangement. Do you think we're stupid? You're quitting the force, you know, used to us. Why are we here then? What do you think? Nice and quiet. No one around. No eyewitnesses. That was your big mistake. If you hadn't have been at that gym. But you were. Terry. Hey, no! No, I can't say no! Is that your game? No. no. You bastard! You cheated bastard! I'll have you for this! I think you're confusing me with Carol Shaw! So Terry killed Wilson and Miller, that right, Donna? Barry came along for the ride. He's dead because of Barry. Double murder, Barry? That's life with no remission. Oh, I ain't plugged no one. Really? That's not what your mama says. You ain't walking anywhere, son. Fucking okay, no. Responsibility for everything. <laughs> Believe it, Lenny, it just won't work. Miller! I gave us a statement. Wilson, Miller, admits them both. Said you were present at Wilson's killing. But he says the jury robbery was his idea from the start. Why did you do it, Lenny? Had you done for much smarter than that? I had to protect my boys. She begged me to do it. Donna. Wendy told her. She came to see me. Now why didn't you just put a stop to it? You knew it was a mistake from the go. With respect. Do you have children, Superintendent? Yeah. Do. They never listen. 
kids. They would have gone ahead with it, no matter what I said. Barry wanted it. He wanted to show me that he could do it. That he could be the man. Or a man. Yeah, you knew about that. Of course I fucking do, I'm not blind. I'm his dad. Nothing changes that. Stupid bastard. He didn't think I'd want to know him unless he could lodge it on the street. Wonder who he got that from. It doesn't matter now. Sorry, sir. There's no smoking in here. 